Some time ago I bought my first ever brand new van. Up to that point all the vans I'd had before had been well and truly second hand. And uh, they'd all been Fords, so uh, I quite like the Ford. And I was going to buy a big van, which was a transit van, which is uh, a very spacious van. And I tried all the other brands first to see which was the most comfortable to sit in, and the Ford one hands down. So I bought the Ford van, and we've still got it. And my brother uh, uses it more than I do because... Because of our situation, looking after my mother, you know, uh, and his work over here in the island, uh, he just needs the van more than I do. But um, the key fobs that when you buy the Ford van, it comes with two key fobs of the remote, you know, the remote unlocking key fobs. And if you look in the manual for the van, it says that if you want to add another key fob, uh, you need what was it? You needed three key fobs to program any further ones in. It was almost like it was designed that if you lost a key fob, then you needed you couldn't program new ones and you had to go to the dealer. But there's a way around that. Uh, if you can program in any number of key fobs in the, the old Ford Transit vans, simply by putting the key into the ignition and turning it, not all the way to the point that the ignition turns over, the uh, starter motor turns over, but if you turn it on to the point that the uh, dashboard indicators light up, then off again, and basically speaking, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight with the key, you're just to that position, then when you did do it the eighth time, you'll hear the lock cycle, and at that point, that's ready to learn new key fobs. So all you do is you press the open on all the key fobs. If, if I pressed this after I'd set the van into this uh, key fob learning mode, then pressing the open button, you'd hear all the locks cycle. And then if you've got the other key fobs that you want to program in, you press the open in it, it would also cycle the locks. And then you turn the ignition off again, uh, the van would remember all these new key fobs. And you also get these replacement key fobs quite cheaply on eBay for about £5. But the first ones started playing up, the switches eventually failed in them. And the, we got some off eBay. And after a while, they worked fine for a good length of time. But after a while, they'd start being a bit sort of random. The, the van would often not unlock and we couldn't work out what it was. And I guess that maybe they'd copied this sort of code hopping algorithm. But it had, you know, it, it had skipped a code or maybe the algorithm wasn't correct. And it just wasn't, uh, you know, it just wasn't unlocking the van anymore. And even, latterly, even when you re tried to reprogram it to the van, it wouldn't program. So I ordered some more key fobs, some newer ones, and they're fine. However, I thought it'd be quite interesting to take a look inside these. So to open these ones, you take them off the keys, and then you put a screwdriver in here, and you twist, and they pop open. And there's a CR2032 lithium cell in the back, and it makes contact, the uh, negative plate makes contact with these contacts, Actually, there's a thing. I should have actually made sure that they were bent down. Hmm, not to worry. There's no little LED in this one that, uh, like the other ones. That's a good point. I wish I'd uh, tried that now. And the side contact makes contact to the positive, which is the, the edge rim. It's quite easy to change the, change the batteries in these, and it is a standard CR2032. Inside is a little rubber housing, this a button housing, and it also keeps it fairly sort of, well, I wouldn't say waterproof, but water resilient. And when you pop that out, the circuit board has virtually nothing on it. It's so minimalist. This one, although it's only got three buttons in this, this is a generic Chinese clony type thing. And it's got five buttons. And the chip. And the only other components are two what look like capacitors here. And one uh, capacitor here, which is across the power rails of the chip. So um, if you look at the chip... The number on it is 10C2 C5PR430. And the replacements we got had a virtually identical layout, but it was a different number on the chip. And I really, uh, you know, uh, I'd really struggled to find it online until I found, well, let's, uh, let's bring in, this is what I, I should have done this earlier on. I should have brought in this, which is a blow up uh, image of the chip itself, the key fob. The nearest I could find was this chip called the SI4010. <clears throat> and it's, you know, pin for pin, it seems to be compatible, but they're, they show the antenna with a sort of midpoint um, connected to positive. And then uh, the two connections to the transmitter that's built into the chip. 
and then a capacitor in the mid, mid position. But this one is different. Uh, this one's not like that. The configuration this one has grabs a notepad. The configuration this one has is it's got the chip and it's got the two antenna pins and they come out and they basically go in one continuous loop. And then the midpoint of the antenna has what look like they could be two capacitors. I tried measuring them and uh, I wasn't getting any sort of joy. I wasn't getting any consistent results. So I, I think they're both capacitors. And one is simply connected to positive, one is connected to negative. I'm not... Uh, totally genned up on the science of super high frequency transmission, so I can't 100% say how that works, um, the, the antennas work and what that's like to be doing. I would guess that um, th that, th that it, these are alternating between positive and negative, and that a small pulse of energy goes backwards and forwards each time. I'm not 100% sure. However, uh, this chip is quite staggering, uh, if it is this chip, because um, it has a you know, it's a, it's got the RF coil driver, the uh, transmitter driver, and then it's got basically a full-blown microcontroller inside. It's it's really quite an impressive specification. And uh, the pin out, pin for pin, this chip that they've used does seem to be compatible. And the only other oddity, they've got the five buttons I thought they were going to be using, because there are five switch inputs in this chip, but they're not using that. They're only using four inputs with uh, pin one uh, just left disconnected here. And uh, th these two buttons here are actually bridged together. And the only reason I can think for that is that if they have a version of key fob with four buttons, or they have the version that I've got with three buttons, it just means they're using the same connections each time. Uh, for those two buttons, you know, it doesn't matter which one gets pressed, it will just activate that input. But um, yeah, they're, they're quite neat. Uh, it's quite surprising just how little there is on this. Uh, I was expecting, you know, the old key fobs used to be really quite complex looking, but uh, this one really isn't. It's just a tiny chip does everything, as is usually the case these days.